רוצה שיקיימו נכוסוב ייטע בהם עודור שנאמר אדיר באמור עם השם. חז"ל say that if a person wants to ensure that his property remains his, he should plant an odor tree. As if it's the state adir b'amoroim Hashem. The Rashi Mesech the Bayon Daftez Vav Medbez explains that this odor tree was like a sequoia, magnificent tree, and it identified the owner of the property. So if the property would be contested down the road, one would say, well, you saw Goldstein's sequoia, and automatically the whole world would know that it's your tree. If it's your tree, it's your property. Additionally, other Mepharshim say that other was a kind of grass that inhibited and prevented various types of insect infestation. It was like a natural pesticide. Another interpretation of Adar is that it was a formidable hedge that delineated your property. So if you wanted to make sure that people knew where your boundaries were to hang on your no trespassing sign, you could plant Adar. That's the Pshad in the Gemara, but the Svasema says an incredible thing. He says, the month of Odor is a time for planting. And if you want to make sure that your possessions remain yours, your investments are successful, your world remains, then plant during Odor. And he talks about the fact that generally speaking, your monetary possessions, your money, your gashmias pushes you away from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So this is the time to plant and do whatever you possibly can with your financial resources to ensure your success forever in this world and the next. The Chiddush of Tzvah says that ordinarily the blessing of Gashmias may be a curse in disguise because the classical response nationally to success is Vayishman Yishurun Vayivot. You get content, Shamanto, Kasisa, everything is wonderful, you don't really need God. So basically, people say, Rabbi Shalom, take care of Borah Park, Wimersburg, Flatbush is okay. Maybe there are some Jews in Afghanistan. There's one Yiddin that needs some help. But we're pretty much okay. So money is generally something that can push you away from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Success begets failure. But if a person utilizes his money, it's a school of Fapanasa. V'yochalto v'savoto v'yrachto. The Chinuch writes that if an individual benches like a mensch, if a person recites Birchas HaMazim with Kavona, it's a school of Fapanasa. Why is that? Why is it by Shmon Esrei, we daven Shmon Esrei, and we could spend five, six, seven, eight, ten minutes on Shmon Esrei, Amida. But the Rabbonin are coined to Moshitas. The Rambam holds the Raisa, but most people hold the Rabbonin. Maybe now, Bach Rasayomim, Bach Salachom, it's Ucha, Bach Rasayomim, it's a De Raisa, but now in Bach Rasayomim. But ordinarily, Tefillah would be a Rabbonin. So for the Rabbonin, it's ten minutes. But for a mitzvah, say the reisa, one of the 630 mitzvahs, you pick up the bench, you give it a kiss, you put it down, and you're done. Teretz is because when I'm davening Shmon Esrei, I'm hungry. When I'm hungry, when I'm needy, I daven like I'm supposed to daven. But when I'm benching, the whole world can go where it wants to go. It's very difficult to be mechaven when you're happy. That's the yisoid of yita odor. When things are going well and you reach mishinichnas odor marben besimcha, do something with your resources. Give more matonas levyonim. Be marben matonas levyonim. Start taking care of the indigent for Purim now, today. That's how an individual 
is going to secure his nechosim according to this Vasemis. Shtayt misach the tainus daf chavtes mishenichnas odor marbim besimcha magen avramim tafresh peivov sif katan hey quotes this halacha and says halacha lemaisa mishenichnas odor marbim besimcha put on a happy face. Now, exactly how are you supposed to be besimcha? That the Shulchan Aruch doesn't say. So, firstly. This month, the entire month, according to Rishalmi, the whole month is kosher for Kriyas Megil. Because it says, V'achodesh ashe nefach lohem miyogon l'simcha. So it's a dava pashat that you have to be marav v'simcha. As I said, shal to tshuva, as I said, is tshuva, simen taf ayin gimel. We don't need to define and explain because it's a double pashit that the whole month you can be to the mitzvah of Megillah according to Rishalmi. Additionally, the Sadagah said the Simcha is that transition creates Shlemus and Simcha. Tremendous. Appreciation, Takol Yisrael, Takol Yisrael. Therefore, the Lachas says, Yisrael sheyeshloi kublano neged goy, neged nochri, yishtadl b'meita v'yecholta yishyaskayim ha-mishpat v'chaydish adam. If you're going to have legal issues with an Eino Yehudi, it doesn't work with a Jew because you're both under the same mazel, but if you're having legal issues with an Eino Yehudi, push off the court date, get it out of Av, and push it to Ad. Now there's a push to cash. As I'll say, Shalmi Megillah Perik Dal and Aloha Aleph, the Ad Bori Mazle. Ad has a great Mazle, but don't we say in Mesech the Shabbos Kufnun Vav Ein Mazle Yisrael? Klal Yisrael is Miala Mazle. So how can we say that the Mazle of Ad is a better Mazle for the Jewish nation? We have no Mazle. This troubled the Marisho. And the Ritva. And the Ritva writes, Dagam ein mazal Yisrael, hani mili bishar yomim. That's other days. Avo b'chodesh zeh yesh mazal, al pi hashgocha me hashamayim. Phenomenal chiddush of the Ritva. That a Kodesh Bochu preordains a special good mazal for Klal Yisrael that has no mazal during chodesh other. Says the Marsha, the ein mazal Yisrael, Mikomoka Megalgal and Schus al Yedei Zaka. Rashi in Shabbos Kufnun Vav, their rights, Tfila Vizchus Meshana Mazle Lutaiva. So put it all together. Chaydesh Adar, there's a healthy Mazel for every Jew, naturally. A Schus from Akonish Baruchu, from Shamayim. You can daven for this as well. But imagine if a person utilizes his resources properly during Chaydesh Adar, you are securing your mazal. You are ensuring your success. The concept of Simcha, Kol Echod Yisamach Kam B'mash Mesamcha K'day Lahazkir Es Mitzvah Sa Chaydesh L'Zikar Nanes Whatever makes you happy, you should do. If it's music, if it's learning Torah. You know, yesterday was the Yem HaZikorin in Torah Vedas of Rav Belsky. I said over a murder to some cipher. If you knew Rav Belsky is at Salma, Rav Rav Belsky, he was always singing, humming. He think in learning, he had a tune. Which brings about the following question. We know that we don't learn on Tisha B'Av because Pikudah Hashem Yishor Misam Chilev. That any child who learns a Blat Gemara, a Mishnah, a Pasuk Chumash, is going to be happy. That's the Metzias. Efashteit, Efashteit Nish, he's a Lamdin, he's Aleph, he's Dalit, he's in the first class, the third class. He's smart, he's not so smart, makes on Afkamina, anyone and everyone. There's an Isra to learn Torah on Tisha B'av, because the very learning of Torah brings Simcha. Frechtach Sam Soifer, if that's the case, so why is it that David Amelech 
the Navi had to have Kiminagi and Hamanagi. Why did you have to have minstrels singing and musicians playing music? They should have been naturally euphoric. They're always learning Torah. A Rav, a Rosh Hashiva, a Rebbe, a Talmud Chacham should never be fagramt. How could you be fagramt? You're learning Torah. How could anyone who learns the daf be upset? How could anyone have a sad face? How is it possible? And Davra Melech of all people, the names of Yisrael, his whole life is singing. What's he singing about? He's learning Torah. Why does he have to sing to dispel negativity? Chum <coughs> says an amazing thing. He says, the only Torah that really causes you to be happy is Kloa Torah. Like you learn halacha and everything's wrapped up in a bow, then you're happy. But if you're left with 16 tzarachians, you're not happy. Goes on, Chum Seifer to say, the David HaMelech, the Nevi'im, the kings of Klau Yisrael, were filled with angst, with tirdis, with tirchas. And that caused them not to be clear in their learning. And if they weren't clear in their learning, they weren't happy from their learning. So they needed artificial stimulants like music to dispel the tirdis and the tirchas, knock them out of the box. Now they can learn clear, now they could be happy. That's why Rebelsky was always singing. Because his Torah was the Torah of Klarkite, Halacha Lamaisa. No stone was left unturned, no Tzorachian left in his life. He got it all, he understood it all, he harvored over it all. And Mamela, you sing. So it wasn't that he sang to become happy. Because he was happy through his personality, his persona of Torah, he sang. So the concept of Simcha in others, take stock of where you're holding and do things that will stimulate your smile. And you know what the Chinuch says? Adam nifol kefi That a person is stimulated, inspired, awakened, aroused by his actions. The actions are drawn. They draw the heart. So if a person is naturally a stingy fellow, he can't part with a shekel. He's a miser. He gives $100 a day to Tzedakah for 100 days, and he will automatically become a philanthropist. It all depends on what you do. Your actions motivate. So the month of Adar is a month to start smiling. Practice. Look in the mirror. Find good things in yourself. And smile at the world. Because by making them happy, you're a Ben Elam Habo. There's a mini brought down to hang up tabloids it's brought down the Yalkut Avram Simen Tafresh Beivav what's the reason why you put up a Mishinichnas Oda Mar Ben Besimcha sign you'll be amazed because a Jewish home is supposed to have an Amo Al Amo Beloy Sid an unfinished area when you walk in opposite your, your entrance, the month of Adar, you cover up the Zechel Lechurban with a Mishinichnas Adar Marbin Besimcha. And one could also say that simply by seeing that sign, it will constantly remind you that there's a mitzvah of Ibasimcha. There's a constant awareness. You walk out the door, Marbin Besimcha. You walk into the door, Marbin Besimcha. You go into the dining room, you go into the kitchen, you go into the bedroom, Marbin Besimcha. The whole month is Marbin Besimcha. That's the reason why you put up that sign. And that's a way, obviously, of eliciting an artificial remembrance, a reminder, to be able to get to the actual mitzvah itself. The Divrei Emes, the Rebbe Mil Lublin says, is a gavaldig eskula to reish chodesh adar. When we talk about the nechassim of a person, we mention the Gemara. The person wants to make sure that his nechassim stay in his possession, bring fruition. He writes, Ika nechsei adam humasim toivim ubefrat tfilois the Gemara in Brachas and Vavim Bay says that every time you open up your sitter and you daven, these are things that are standing. Says the Rebbe Milublin, 
The Ikat Fila is Lachash. It's called Nechosim. It's the concept of Kisu, it's Sanua. The whole world doesn't have to see that you're a super Jew. It's private, it's quiet. It's introspection, reflection, connection, Takarish Baruch, you and God. So if a person, Haraitza, she is Skaimu Nechosav, he wants to make sure that his Tfilis will be accepted. Yita Bohen Odor. You got a Davin on Reish Chodesh Odor. Then your Tfilis will see wondrous results. As the Pasuk quoted in the Gemara, Shenemar Adir Bamori Mashem. That's a tefillah, that's Aymed Baruma Shal Oilam. Mishinech Nas Ada Marbim, Besimcha Marbim Betfila. Make sure, Reish Chaydesh Ada, you captivate the moment, you capture the moment, and captivate the Rabbeinu Shal Oilam with the sincerity of your tefillahs that are between you and him. In fact, it said over. That from great Hasidish Rebbe's, the Rebbe Shalom, the Rebbe Shmuel, Nechasim, what are your real possessions? Or well, one could say your children. What does the Torah and Rashi say? Ela told us, Noyach, Noyach, Ish Sadik, Iker told Daisav Shal Adamasim Taivim. Your most important possessions are your character traits, are your Midas Taivas, are your Yiras Hashem, your Avas Hashem. Because they're really hidden, covered up. On his stories, La Shem Alekenu, Chosim Shiesh Bemachrais. Person wants to make sure that his midas are improved. Yita, he has to plant them within himself. An odor. And they would say, Be'odor, Zola Zich Ein Flansin, in Zich, in Odor. Because that's the month for Kla Yisrael's planting. And that's the shot if you have a, a judgment day with an Eina Yehudi. The Isle Dina Bahadi Goy Lamsi Loy Nafshe. Who's the guy? The Eitzahore. Chazal saying Shabbos Kufay Med Bez Eza El Zor Shabagufa Shaladam Zay Eitzahore. Who's the foreign god? Kola Koyes Kiloyvet Avadazor. You lost control. There's no Rabbanu Shalom in your life. We're talking about in your life. So. Adar is a time to improve your midas. And finally, the Mare Nayim, incredible Goyen, he writes, Bechoydesh Zeh, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Kaibyochel Shoychin Iton. The Rebbein Shalom is living with us. And if the Rebbein Shalom is living with us, there's nothing lacking in the palace, the house of the king. He says, the names of the months each mean something. And the reason why Adar is called Adar is because Alef Dor, Alef, Aluf Eishel Oilom, Aluf Nurayata. The Ais Alef is the first of all the Aisias. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the first of all the Nimtzayim. Adar is a time when the Rebbein Shalom lives with us. And if he's living with us, we'll be lacking nothing, but you have to welcome him to your domicile. Shem's not going to want to live in a place with his Tumah, or Rechilas, or any kind of negativity. So there are many wonderful ways we can improve in Adar. We can commit ourselves to Mot Staka, like the Svasema says. You want the Nechassim to remain Yita Behem Adar. Get rid of the bug infestation. Get rid of the Lashon Hara, the negativity that's in your life. Plant Sequoias. Let me tell you a story about a Sequoia. It's not really about a sequoia, but it's a marshal to a sequoia. The Yimra Yemes, the Gera Rebbe, had a chassid who came to him after the war. And he told him, Rebbe, the Welt zockt, as the apple of fault is weit from boim. That the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And he started crying, he broke down, because he had several children that lived through the horrors of the concentration camps. And there was Shaino Pirish. They weren't keeping Shabbos kashras. They weren't Yidden. So he said, if the apple of fallen is right from Boim, if the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and the problem is the tree. I'm at fault. Because the apple is just like the tree. 
And if these kids are no good, I'm no good. So the Imam has told him, Oifenart, cuts style. He said, that's true when it's a Ruach Mitsuya. But when it's a Ruach She'ena Mitsuya, the apple falls very far from the tree. When you're dealing with prevalent winds, then naturally when the apple falls off the tree, it falls right by the trunk of the tree. But when you have a tempest, a holocaust, Chorben Europa, the apple's thrown very far away. Nechamtani Rebbe, you comforted me. Adkan is the story with the Imre Emes and the Chassid. But I thought to add an addendum. What about us? Children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren that are descendants of the survivors of that Ruach Shein Metsuya. Or descendants of the Ruach Shein Metsuya. It's an American in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s when it's impossible to keep Shabbos and Gashmi. And if we fell, we're here today learning Torah on President's Day. If we're learning Torah on President's Day, a legal holiday, and not going to work, and not squandering and wasting our time, but we're learning Torah as Hashem, that means we fell very close to the trees that bore us. Those must be sequoias, our parents and grandparents. Those aren't just stum fly-by-night trees. Those must be trees that are enrooted. Adir b'amorim Hashem. That's the aside of Purim and it's the aside of our avoid.